Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast, where you'll learn about advanced wealth building strategies from real estate investing to creating massive ROI and secure retirement profits. So pour yourself a cup of coffee, grab a notepad, and lean in, because Big Mike has got the mic, starting now. Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. I'm the Big Mike. Mike Zlatnik, and today it is my pleasure and a privilege to welcome back my good friend, Jay Connor. Hi, Jay. Hello there, Mike. Great to see you again, and thanks for having me back on. Thank you very much for coming back on. Appreciate it. And um, Jay is a brother from the Collective Genius Mastermind. We've been there for many years, and you hail from small town America uh, called um, Moore, Moorhead, North Carolina, right on the water, right? That's it. Moorhead City, little teeny tiny town. Uh, my total target market that I invest in has only got 40,000 people. Got it. But it's it's your typical small town America, right? That's right. That's right. So just to remind folks a little bit about just a couple more words about you, family, married, kids, cats, pets, dogs, anything <laughs> that good goes. Sure. So uh, I was actually born and raised here. Um, I met my wife, Carol Joy, my first Sunday in town, met her at church out in Wichita Falls, Texas, when I moved out to Texas back in the 80s. But uh, Carol Joy and I, uh, in just a couple of months, uh, we're going to be married 35 years. Congratulations. uh, We weren't blessed with any children, but we got 28 nieces and nephews. (laughs) That's wonderful. she, She comes from a big family. Um, but yeah, we've been back here in this small area, um, since 1988, uh, we started investing in single family houses, uh, 2003. So we've been doing it a long time. Uh, we've rehabbed about 450 houses here in this little area. And, um, the first six years we were in the business from 2003 to 2009, we relied on local banks and mortgage companies to fund our deals. Back in that day, Mike, I never even heard of hard money, hard money lenders. I never heard of private money. I thought you just went to the local bank and borrowed money for your deals. Well, that was a rude awakening in January of 2009. I called up my banker and I learned real quickly that my lines of credit were gone, like gone overnight. And I didn't even know anything about it. So that's when I was introduced to this world of private money and and work and doing business with individuals. So um, in about 90 days, I was able to raise a little over a couple of million dollars in funding that I didn't have prior to being cut off. So um, I've been using private money uh, all that time since 2009. Carol, Joe, and I have got about 46 private lenders right now, individuals that invest in our business. So Anyway, um, I guess I'm self-proclaimed as the private money authority because I've taught so many students how to do it and how to go find capital. And like yourself, I tell everybody, you need to have fantastic relationships with as many people as you can, hard money lenders, uh, private lenders, because, you know, you just don't know what deal is going to come along that, you know, you need more than one relationship to make that deal happen. Yeah, that's the great wisdom. Uh, having private relationships with uh, folks that have some capital but sitting and earning very little or waiting for the next project. And uh, uh, it, it is much better and much safer for you as a deal maker and a shaker uh, to raise money from private investors versus the banks. Because as you, you, as you said, you don't know when the bank's going to turn off the faucet. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with bank Banking issues at that time, we obviously hit a crisis, but um, uh, that is, the crisis aside, you're still better off uh, with that. I mean, the, the big question, would you rather have 67 individual investors or one gigantic investor who's funding everything, right? Well, you know, I learned, I learned the hard way, uh, Mike, that the most dangerous number in any, in any business, no matter what business you're in, the most dangerous number is the number one. In other words, I don't want to have one uh, realtor that I do business with or one general contractor or one plumber or one electrician or one lender. <laughs> so it was, it was, a, it was, but you know what, Mike, it was a huge blessing in disguise that I lost my lines of credit because 
in the first 12 months, in that year that I was lost my lines of credit in January that year, the next 12 months, our business tripled because this happened in 2009. And of course, you and everybody else remembers what was going on in 2007, 2008, 2009. All these foreclosures came along and I would not have been able to take advantage of that opportunity of all those bank-owned properties if I didn't have a bunch of private money lined up uh, because, you know, you got to pay cash for that stuff. So due to the adversity and that difficulty and that challenge, it was a it was the biggest blessing in disguise that I've come across uh, since starting this business in 2003. In fact, if it were not for that that difficulty and that challenge, you and I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be here on the podcast with you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the good old expression: every pessimist finds difficulty, and every opportunity, and every optimist finds an opportunity and every difficulty. It was a difficulty having your cut, your lines of credit cut. The reason it was an opportunity is because all these houses got distressed and you can pick them up at a great, great price. You just needed to have the capital and the capital came from private money. Uh, by the way, I, I I heard you have a new book out. What's the new book? But you, I do. In fact, yeah. it was just released, yeah. hit number one on Amazon. So it's called Where to Get the Money Now. And uh, for your listeners uh, there, Mike, um, I'm glad to give it away. That'll save them 20 bucks on Amazon. But uh, where to get the money now, uh, the URL, and I'll ship it to you. If, you know, if they'll just pay a couple of bucks and cover shipping, um, www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash free book. Jay Connor, I'm with an E-R, not an O-R. J Connor, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash free book. And we'll rush that book right out. The book, I go into great detail as to how I've actually been able to attract all these private lenders on funding our deals. I, I teach in the book where the private lenders are located, where you go to find them, exactly what you say. Uh, and it's all about framing. I mean, I have yet, Mike, to ask anybody for money. I haven't asked anybody for money. And people say, well, Jay, how do you get over $8 million uh, from these different individuals to you know, invest in your business? And it's real simple. I just put on my teacher hat. I so of these 40 some private lenders, none of them had ever heard about private money. None of them had ever heard about self-directed IRAs. And that's a big writer downer right there. Over half of our private lenders are loaning money from their retirement accounts uh, for our deals. And they never heard of how to transfer their money over to a third party custodian to where they could actually loan the money out and have unlimited income per year that's either tax deferred or tax free. But I go into all that detail um, uh, in the book right here. Makes total sense. Thank you for sharing. Uh, let's just cover on a couple of topics. I'm sure you talk about them in the book. Uh, let's just go to the basics. So uh, where are the folks besides the country clubs, right? <laughs> Typically, the country club is where most uh, folks hang out with uh, with some capital. Let me put it this way: Do you go to country clubs, or how do you how do you find folks with uh, investable capital, maybe uh, untapped retirement money, which is sitting in stocks now, and most people don't know that they can move it to a self directed custodian and lend the money out. Or it is just taxable money. So, how do you, what are the best places in a, in in a average town, America? Anyone who wants to raise capital for whatever real estate deals they have. Sure. So, as you said, I go into detail on on the book, uh, but here they are. There's three, in my experience, there's three categories of what I call people. There's three categories of private lenders as to where you find them. The first category is what I call your own warm market, your own center of influence, people that are in your cell phone, your email, your Facebook friends. And I don't mean your fake Facebook friends, but your actual people, you know, your call LinkedIn friends and family. Let's just call them real friends and family. Exactly. Um, the second category of where private lenders are is what I call your expanded warm market. A lot of times I'll have students say to me, Mike, they'll say, Jay, all my people are broke. 
my family, my friends, they ain't got no money. Well, first of all, I don't believe them. But anyway, I think they've got a fear of they don't know how to approach the people and put on their teacher hat. But the expanded warm market, I say, go to where the money is. In other words, I say the more money you wall around, the more money sticks to you. So what's your expanded warm market? Well, first of all, your local community, getting involved in your local community, all the different social networking civic groups, such as Rotary Clubs, uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, your local church or churches. So how, how can you expand your own network that you have? The third category of private lenders are existing private lenders, people that are individuals that are already loaning money out to, uh, to real estate investors. And I'm not talking institutional money, but just individuals. Well, when I first started attracting private money back in 2009, one thing I did was I hired my real estate attorneys, paralegal, to search the public records looking for deeds of trust or mortgages where individuals were loaning money out secured by real estate. Well, that plan didn't work too good. In 90 days in this small area, we found one person. <laughs> I said, there's got to be a better and easier way. So actually we developed uh, the private lender data feed, which is software that my company has and my students have access to that goes out every month and we get every new private lender loan from, pub, from public records. And we can go into the software and search by zip code, how to, uh, who these private lenders are, got their contact information and et cetera. Um, another uh, place to find existing private lenders are your local, uh, I say local, not necessarily local, but your self-directed IRA companies they have networking events. And now since we're on this side of COVID, they have in-person networking events. Well, the companies that I'm associated with, Mike, and that I know very, very well, about 70% of those account holders at self-directed IRA companies are loaning money out or they are looking to loan money out on real estate, secured by real estate to real estate investors. So those networking uh, groups, and of course, they're doing them now on Zoom and virtual as well, is a great place to network and to make contacts with people that have money that are looking to loan it out. Yeah, it makes total sense. Uh, I appreciate you uh, jumping into a little bit of depth. Uh, Self-directed IRA custodians uh, do have phenomenal sort of uh, universe of investors with capital. You obviously uh, need to spend time to network with them and uh, build the relationships. So at the end of the day, I don't know who would loan you any money out before they get to know, like, and trust you. And, and you, you are a very likable guy. From that perspective, you should have fairly easy. Well, you, you not should. You, you, you have fairly easy time uh, getting people to uh, uh, know, like, and trust you. And, and, and that's, the, that's a step number one. And uh, I, I, I agree with you. It's your close family, you're a little bit of the extended family, and then obviously the professional sources. Do you ever, just curious, do you ever go to the, um, let's call them the, the super big boys, the institutional players, the uh, anchor loans of, of the world, the genesis of the world, the, the big um, um, players who, who loan a lot of money? Or you're, you're always better off with your private folks. You may pay them a little more, but you get a little bit more lenient terms. Yeah. So it depends on how big the deal is, right? So um, I've got um, a couple of relationships with, um, you know, our fellow CG members that uh, are hard money lenders. And like, you know, I recently did a deal that was like, oh, it was right around $400,000. Well, I just didn't want to tie up that much money of my private lender money, uh, particularly when I knew that I was going to get in and get out, you know, on the short term, probably within a, like a, a six month period. So the answer is yes. So, you know, uh, you know, like with yourself, I've got relationships with uh, hard money lenders. So I let the type of deal dictate uh, the type of money that I'm going to use on that deal, whether it's going to be a hard money or private money. That makes total sense. Uh, now I'm going to shift you a little bit and kind of walk you in the 
<laughs> in the arena of commercial real estate equity. I do a lot of commercial deals. We invest into a lot of commercial equity deals. Uh, do you, by any chance, again, just again, I haven't read your book. Do you teach folks how to raise capital for equity deals or only pure debt deals? Yeah. In other words, so, yeah, the focus hard money classic versus you have a you have a, you know you're acquiring some small multifamily and you're raising capital for that, but you're yeah. raising equity capital, not first lien mortgage. Right. Yeah. The uh, the focus uh, of the book is uh, for single family houses. All the examples that I have in it are single family, and of course. As you know, better than anybody else, Mike, if you're raising private money for commercial deals, you know, some small apartments or whatever, it's all the same money. It's just, it's structured differently. And, you know, their security is typically different. If you're raising money for a fund, say, you know, uh, in contrast to what we call one-offs, right? Every deal stands on its own. So in this world of private money, um, we borrow the money, they're getting the deed of trust or mortgage, uh, securing that loan by that property that they're loaning money on. So, um, as I said, it's all the same money, but it's structured differently. Yeah. Yeah. Make, makes total sense. Uh, you, you, you're teaching them how to do plain vanilla first, first trust did the deeds or mortgages, uh, relatively safe. Uh, they don't capture the same upside as, as the equity at the same time. Most people just look for safety when they invest in these trustees. So it makes total sense. Um, yeah, and then on the, on the commercial side, of course, it's, the relationships are similar, uh, but the capital structure a little, little bit different. So, Correct. Um, any other quick tips, suggestions uh, for folks to, uh, how do they build relationships? You know, this, the, this is the most fundamental question of all questions. They get to know somebody, they go to an event, like you said, go to a local church or a Rotary Club or, um, you know, volunteer events or country club, whatever you want to call them. And um, how do you wind up not trying to sell, but instead trying to build a relationship? I think it's the most fundamental question because a lot of people go there with an agenda and your agenda is to meet people other people's agenda is to raise money. And sometimes you can't get, you know, you can't put the carriage ahead of the horse. You, you got to right. build a relationship first. That's How right. How do you do that? So, you know, I practice and I teach all the time when you are getting involved, particularly with a new group, say it's a civic group or whatever, you know, in your local area. Um, and by the way, I have raised a lot of money and I've had just a fantastic relationship with BNI organizations, right? bni.org and uh, ivan meisner started that group and so i teach and i practice go to these organizations giving value what can you bring what can you offer to the group as a participant in the group one big thing that you can offer to do is volunteer to serve in these different groups in um you know in whatever kind of capacity you know like if it's your local RIA group, or if it's your local, you know, you can be a member in, in, in a lot of realtor associations and not be a realtor yourself. Well, volunteer to check people in at the group, volunteer to, you know, take money at the door, be a volunteer, be a servant, go there sincerely with a servant's heart, and you're going to be quickly recognized uh, as someone that's trustworthy. Um, and that's just not there to be a taker. I mean, you know, you and I experienced the same thing in our, in our mastermind group. I mean, all of us in that mastermind group, we have got the attitude of what can I do for you? Because it's like Zig Ziglar says, you know, if I can help everybody else get enough of what they're looking for, I'm not going to have to worry about me. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's the right attitude. It's a servant's attitude. Uh, it does take an investment of time and effort and energy. Uh, and it is not for everyone. You have to be genuinely serve it in heart. If you're not, you're not going to enjoy it and it's not going to flow well, but it is, it is a time commitment. It is an effort commitment. Uh, and as long as it, you feel great about it, 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 it brings warmth to your heart, helping others, then you'll do well through that process. Uh, any other thoughts or besides just spending your time serving others? Uh, is there another suggestions? Uh, like you said, uh, go with a teacher's uh, attitude or teacher's kind of hat. Um, any other thoughts on this? 
Yeah. Um, so one of the most common questions I get is, Jay, how do I start? How do I start? What's the first thing that I before do? Before that, how, how do you start? That's, that's a question you get on some, you got somebody interested. Before that happens, how do you get people to ask you that question? Yeah. So, well, no, no, that my, my students are asking me, how do I start private, uh, lending private? I mean, finding private money. Not that's not the private lenders question. That's that's my students question. And so I say, first of all, and of course, in the book, it goes into it step by step. First of all, make your list, make your list in your own warm market of who that it is that you would like to reach out to. And I say and they say, well, how do you start making your list? Well, I say start with everybody you know that's retired. There's a good chance that someone that's retired has got retirement funds, right? And there's also a good chance these people that have retirement funds, there's a 99% chance they never heard of self-directed IRAs. So it gives you the perfect opportunity to teach people what that is all about. One of my favorite questions to ask people is to lead in with the question, did you know? Did you know? And one of my favorite questions to ask people is, did you know that there is a legal and safe and ethical way to use retirement funds to get unlimited returns a year with retirement with your retirement funds, either tax free or tax deferred with no penalty? They're going to answer no. I never heard of that. So here starts your conversation. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great hook. Uh, did you know? And you tell them what you wanted to ask about. So, exactly. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, like like they say, all good things must come to an end. We are kind of running, beginning to run out of time. So uh, once again, how would folks get a hold of you? And besides, so besides the book, just mention uh, you have educational program. So yeah, I assume you teach folks. Uh, how to raise capital. What do you teach? Yeah. So uh, at our live events, my live event is called the Private Money Academy Conference, the Private Money Academy Conference. As a matter of fact, right up here, Mike, when they get the book, I'm going to include two free tickets valued at $3,000 to uh, the Private Money Academy Conference. So at that conference, not only do I teach about how to locate and secure a lot of private money very quickly, but I have private lenders at the event for the attendees to network with. And uh, I also teach at the event all four pillars of our business, and that is how we find deeply discounted deals and we don't rely on the multiple listing service, particularly in this market. But how do we find deals? How do we get them funded? Uh, how do we sell them very, very fast? So finding uh, funding, flipping, and and freedom. How do we automate this business to where you can actually be running a business and it's not running you? This, The actual business itself, I'm in it less than 10 hours a week, more like six or seven. And so automation, uh, we spend a lot of the third day on automating the business. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, yeah, you either delegate, automate, or get rid of it, right? Exactly, exactly. I, I tell people, dictate, delegate, and disappear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you, you, it, 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 it's, it's the good old not to do list, and you start with not to do, and then you decide what, you, what, what do you do with not to do items? If exactly. you automate, that's, that, that's a perfect solution, so... Appreciate you, Jay. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for giving the gift of your book. Uh, once again, Jay Connor. Uh, uh, so, Jay, again, well, it's, it's jayconnor.com slash free book, right? That's it. J A Y C O N N E R.com forward slash free book. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. And um, we'll do it again soon. All right. Thank you, Mike. See you soon. Thank you for listening to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. To receive your copy of Mike's How to Choose a Smart Real Estate Fun Book, head to BigMikeFun.com or visit Amazon and type Mike's slot name. Keep listening and keep investing Big Mike style. See you on the next episode.